All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, so now I think uh, it's a good time for your brains to take a break. You know, I've, I've been seeing the other presentations here and they've been uh, speaking about advanced topics. And this is really something really simple. It's just a, a tool. So I'm going to be talking about this tool, Kubrick Manager. So uh, first, I'm new here. Uh, so most of people here doesn't know me. So my name is Marcelo. I'm actually a customer engineer at Google Cloud in Brazil. I work uh, with infrastructure and application modernization. Uh, I've been work I've worked before as cloud architect at IBM and also worked at Amazon Web Services in the professional services team. I was a consultant at Oracle when I started working with cloud back in 2013. And so it goes. Um, here you have my GitHub and my LinkedIn profile. And also, this is the first time I get a chance to put these badges be below my name. So I, I've got some certifications as well, um, mostly on Kubernetes. And I, uh, I've i got these quick disclaimers here uh, just to protect myself. So. Uh, you know, all the ideas and codes, concepts and everything are mine. Uh, I'm not representing anyone here. The opinions that I'm sharing here are also mine. And all the projects and initiatives that are discussed here were created with my resources. There is no sponsorship and they, they've been done on my free time. So this is, is not related in any way to what I do at my day-to-day -day job at Google at all. And I think that the last thing that is uh, the most important here is that uh, I'm, I, although I can write code, I do not consider myself a developer. So just wanted you guys to be warned that you may see some weird stuff ahead, okay? So let's go. So what is Kubevert Manager? So Kubevert Manager is a web user interface to Kubevert that lets you manage your virtual machines, virtual machine pools, data volumes, and other workloads related to Kubevert in a single place. With Kubevert Manager, uh, you can manage Kubernetes services as well to load balance and expose traffic to your virtual machine pools, for example, in a simple and effective way. It's easy to install and maintain, uh, and it also offers some integration with uh, Prometheus for monitoring. So this avoids you, you, you know, you don't have to keep writing complex YAML files and, you know, writing those giant command lines. So uh, this is basically a tool to uh, help people that is not used to command line and YAML files to use the to to use you know this technology. And th the main features uh, that we have in Kubevert Manager, it, of course, you can manage virtual machines lifecycle, so you can uh, you have support for oper operations like you know start stop virtual machine pause, resume, you can change the size of it, uh, the memory CPU directly from a web interface. You can also create virtual machine pools uh, and specify the template of the virtual machines that are gonna be on this pool, as well as the number of replicas. And you can also customize the labels uh, to help the selectors. Uh, we work as well with uh, cluster instance types, okay? And, and I'm, I'm mentioning the cluster here because I've got an issue today on my GitHub about it. So uh, we use cluster instance types because it's easier to, you know, to work on the interface instead of only instance type because instance type is uh, namespaced. So it will give some headaches to, you know, uh, to manage it and also, uh, when you install uh, the tool, uh, it provisions as well two uh, different priority classes that you can use and choose between them. And of course, if you have more, you can also use them. Uh, 
but basically I, I'm using like a, a default one and a preemptible one. So when you're creating uh, either the virtual machine pool or the or a single virtual machine, you can choose uh, it uh, there. You also have uh, access to the uh, virtual machine console uh, through uh, no VNC solution that is embedded uh, in, in this tool. Uh, it also has some support to uh, Mutus as a backend. So if you have network attachment definitions, you can select between you know, uh, the networks that you want to use in the virtual machine or in the pool. And also we're using containerized data importer, data importer as a backend for uh, volumes. So you can manage the, the volume and import images into them. As I've explained earlier, we also have uh, support for basic Kubernetes services. So you can create uh, a load balancer or a cluster IP to point uh, to balance traffic to your uh, virtual machine pool, for example, or to expose uh, something from a virtual machine. Uh, I've added as well cloud init support. So uh, depending on the network uh, that you choose, you can, uh, you know, fill in uh, the cloud init for network parameters like IP, net mask, and gateway DNS. And you can also uh, set username, password, or SSH key. And uh, the last thing that I've added was uh, Prometheus, Prometheus integration. So you can set up Prometheus integration and you can have some metrics in the tool. And uh, the idea behind the tool uh, was, was that uh, before using Kubrit, I was using, um, uh, I forgot the name of the tool, but it, it, it was a web tool that I used it to use here in, in my lab, Proxmox, it's a tool. And uh, I've decided to move to Kubrit and um, I'll, you know, I, I, I was like, I, I didn't want to keep writing a lots of YAML files. So I, I do a lot of testing at home. So I like to keep, you know, uh, uh, installing uh, new Kubernetes versions or multiple clusters. And uh, so I needed to create, uh, to have, you know, like a, a, a fast way to create machines and create pools and not needing to keep writing you know, YAML files and copying uh, images. So this is uh, what made me work on it. And also I wanted, you know, to have some basic operations easier, like start, stop, restart, and power off. Uh, the VNC was also something that, that really, uh, that, that was really hard for me. So, you know, uh, having to have, you know, a, VNC client on my box and, you know, doing some port forwards and stuff like that. And I, I wanted something easier um, to work with that. And in the beginning, I've, I've wrote like a backend to, to my tool to, uh, to manage the disks, but uh, talking to people on Slack, they, they've encouraged me to use, you know, container as a data importer so uh, i've started using uh, data volumes and it became easier to you know do some disk manipulation as well and that's it so uh, having you know uh, all these kind of concepts inside a uh, a simple user interface uh, put together uh, it came to my mind that it would be easier for you know for covert and that's why i'm talking to you about it here to scale its reach because uh, if you get some folks from, I don't know, maybe VM or, or you know, um, Proxmox and stuff like that, they are used to, you know, easy screens and just clicking some buttons. And with a tool like this, you, you can get someone that doesn't even know what a Kubernetes is and the people and the person will be able to, you know, create the virtual machine and, you know, boot put it up and, you know, load the console and 
maybe even create like a, a load balancer to expose a pool and stuff like that without having to know anything about YAML or the, the person doesn't need to know what a pod is, what a service is, you know, what is the cube free KPI, nothing like that. So the idea behind it was that. The tool is, is really simple. So I've, uh, I've open sourced it uh, on GitHub under Apache 2.0 license. And uh, basically, it's a, an Angular JS uh, application. Uh, we're using uh, admin LT, that is a bootstrap you know, template. We have also no VMC uh, embedded on it for the console access. And the tool runs inside uh, the, the stat content is deployed inside an Nginx. And we also have a uh, kube cuttle running on the container. So uh, basically we have like a, a, a container that when it boots, it runs kubectl proxy to kube API. Uh, and then we have like a, a proxy pass on Nginx to Prometheus. And there is also a proxy pass uh, from Nginx to kubectl proxy. And the static content is inside uh, Nginx. So the user talks to the Nginx inside the pod and uh, Nginx, you know, will direct the web call depending on, on the path that the user is calling. So if, if it's on, on, on the dashboard screen, for example, there will be multiple calls to, you know, Kubernetes API to get the number of nodes that we have, uh, Kubevirt API to, to get the number of VMs uh, and VMs instances, and we also have some calls to CDI to get the numbers of data volumes. And of course, uh, we also call uh, Prometheus to show uh, some graphs in the interface. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I know this, this is screenshots like sucking, but I, I wanted to give an idea in case anyone uh, wanted to to deep dive on it, uh, on how the, the project is organized. Again, I'm not a developer, so I've done my best here. So uh, on the conf directory, we have the Nginx configuration files. In the entry point, we have a script that uh, we put inside uh, the container to load kubectl proxy in background. Uh, in Kubernetes directory, we have the YAMLs, so for uh, the namespace creation, uh, for the deployment, for the serves, we also have some role-based access control there because we create a service account that kubectl uses to connect to the API. We have a few cluster uh, instance types, priority classes, and stuff like that, so it's all Kubernetes related. Uh, inside the application source in components, uh, each screen of the user interface is declared as a component there. Uh, in models, I have like a local representation of the objects that we have uh, in Kube, Kubernetes API or Kubevirt API. So uh, I have like a, a, a simple version of them with only the fields that I really use, you know. Uh, in the services, we have the layer that interacts with Kubernetes API, Kubevirt API, and containerized data importer. Uh, in templates, I have like the the, uh, uh, the YAML templates for the services that we call uh, in Kubernetes. So we have templates for virtual machines, templates for uh, pools, for data volumes. So basically, when user is feeling uh, filling in the the forms in the web interface, we just uh, replace some values and submit it. Uh, and also in assets, we have some uh, the static content and admin LT uh, template. There is also a GitHub pipeline defined to build and test the code. There are some functional and and unit testing as well. 
uh, but I have no automated releasing for now. I've been considering using something like Tecton or Pro in the future. It's really easy to get started. So to get started, you just uh, in in my environment because I, I didn't have like a a shared storage uh, and I was using host path. So th this is how I, I set up here. So uh, first thing we need is, is to set the storage class, you know, to wait for the first consumer and allow uh, volume expansion, of course, so the user can increase the volume in case needed. And then on container as a data importer, we need to honor, you know, the wait for our first co consumer so that when uh, the virtual machine starts, the, the volume gets provisioned so that we can we can have the volume and the virtual machine in the same node. And then you apply, I have like a bundled YAML file that you apply it and it will install everything you need and you should be ready to go. I've uh, recorded a simple demo for you guys that I plan to, to go over here. So this is the main screen. Uh, you have like uh, the metrics from Prometheus, like memory, CPU usage, network and storage. You also have some basic information like the number of nodes, number of virtual machines, data volumes, pools, and stuff like that. And we also have here in the left menu, the, the options that you have like dashboard, virtual machines and stuff like that. In the nodes screen, you have some information about the nodes that are in the cluster. Uh, so uh, these are the Kubernetes nodes and you have some information about the nodes like architecture, CPU, memory, disk, uh, operating system, uh, stuff like that. If you have Mutus, you can see a list of network attachment definitions as well. So here at my place, I have like um, two different bridges that I use. One is for virtual machines and the other one is for Wi-Fi. Here uh, you have the cluster instance types, so you can create edit and stuff like that, you know. So for example, to edit, you can enter the number of CPU and memory uh, to customize it. And also I'm going to create one there for you to see. So basically you can put the name of, of the type you're creating and you can set the number of CPUs and number of memories and, and memory and create it. And there you have it. And then um, on the virtual machine uh, screen, you have the list of virtual machines that, it, that are running on your environment. They are uh, grouped by um, nodes. And you have like the, the, the uh, some information like the type of the virtual machine, uh, the IP address, and you can also have uh, a little bit more of information. And also you have like the, the main uh, operations like pause and resume, console, and edit, power off, remove, stuff like that. And you have the create VM button on each node. So you can create the VM on the node you want. So in this example, we're creating a VM on node four. In the basic screen, you can put the name of the VM and namespace. So we're creating uh, this KS2023 test VM, and we're gonna use the virtual machines namespace. And then you can set some labels if you want to, and you need to. So uh, this is an example label. Uh, and then you have the CPU and memory. So you can use a uh, predefined cluster instance type, or you can use custom. In case you select custom, you can enter the number of sockets, cores, threads, and memory. In this case, we're using a uh, uh, predefined type. Uh, and also you can select the priority class, so standard or preemptible. Um, and then you have the disk tab and on the disk tab, uh, you can choose the type of disk you want. If you want a blank disk, if you want to import it from a URL or use an existing one, 
So in this case, we're importing from the URL. You can select the storage class you want to use. And then we can enter the size of the disk in gigs. And I'm going to put the URL there to import this image as well. And of course, you can do this with the second disk as well. So there, there, there are two disks uh, that you can use. And here you can select the networking plot. It, and th there's something interesting here. Uh, if you select a network different from pod, you will see that network data tab shows up. So let me just move it back so you can see it. So when you select a different one, network data shows up. This is the cloud in it because for pod network, it, it comes automatically. So here is the user screen. You can use password or SSH, whatever. So we are using user Ubuntu and I'm setting the password there instead of a key. And then network data. So uh, fast forward, IP, NetMask, Gateway, DNS, and, and the last screen, you can set uh, the init script and you hit create. The virtual machine uh, doesn't start automatically. So it's just, uh, when you create it, it just stop it. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the, that, the data volume as well, it, it's waiting for the first consumer. So nothing happened there. And then we, if we come here and uh, power on the, the virtual machine, mm -hmm. uh, the data volume will get bound. So PVC bound. And then uh, the virtual machine will change st status to provisioning and data volume will start importing. And then I'll fast forward here as well so uh, that we don't have to wait. After the data volume uh, imported, the virtual machine is running. We can't see the IP address here because it's not running on the pod network, it's running on a bridge. So to see IP addresses on a bridge, we need to have the, the guest agent installed inside the virtual machine. So this is the console view for the virtual machine. And I'm going to install uh, the guest agent really quick there. So installing the guest agent. There you go. And now you have the IP address there on the screen. And uh, I'm going to stop it. And uh, this is how we stop. And then you can see in the screen that we have some uh, some changes in the graphs for the metrics. So this is coming from Prometheus. And I'm going to delete this virtual machine. Uh, do you, are you sure? Yes. And another thing that I've done here that is really important is I, I, I'm not deleting the volumes from virtual machines automatically. So that if anyone deletes a virtual machine by mistake, um, the the image will will, will, will be there. Um, here we're gonna create a pool, virtual machine pool. So it's more or less the same thing. Okay. Um, so pool name, uh, you select the namespace as well. Um, and then you can set the number of replicas you want. And these labels will help you with the uh, selector so that the pool can control it. And uh, what else? I'm, I'm almost done here. So uh, we can use a select a type, just like the other screen, you know, uh, CPU, socket score, memory. Um, let me fast forward it or maybe make it go faster. So 1.75. So uh, importing from URL as well, uh, 10 gigs, and then we put the URL over there. And I'm going to use pod networking for this one. And then uh, setting the user and password for the pool. And we have like, I need script to install uh, Nginx and start it. And the, the script also uh, changes the index uh, with the host name. 
so that we can see the balancer in action. And then uh, we have it importing for um, for pools, the machines start automatically. You can see the machines either on VM pools window or on the virtual machines as well. So they are grouping and you can see where they are. And now we're going to create like a, a, a load balancer to balance the traffic between them. And it's really simple. You just click on, on the plus sign, get put the name, select the namespace and your pool and select the type and port and stuff like that. And then you, you I have like a test here and you can see that a, a few of the tests are failing here because uh, some of the machines have uh, uh, do not have uh, SSD, so they are slower, okay? So the benefits of, you know, uh, Kubernetes Manager, you can get running in seconds, the tool is packed in a container, really easy. You don't need any training, no client installation. It's a simplified uh, VM uh, management and you have uh, Kubernetes uh, integration and monitoring as well. Okay, these are some of the ideas for the future. So, uh, you know, create a screen to, uh, to auto scale the VM pools, export VMs and get screenshots, uh, get some disk cache options, disk import options, and some uh, user interface improvements. Uh, last, I, I would like to give some shout outs. Uh, first to Andrew that encouraged me to submit the proposal. Uh, Andrew Gracie was the first one that contributed with code to the solution. And all the other people here uh, gave me some feedback on the tool that encouraged me to, you know, continue this journey. And up for Q&A. We might have to move Q&A to uh, the general chat, I'm afraid, uh, just so we uh -huh. can get ready for the, the next presenter. Thank you very much, Marcelo. Thank you. Thank you, guys.